Do we have any agenda today? today? Uh, so if we have time at the end, um, I've got Stephen Belair, who's going to be taking over sort of the Envoy VPP work. We'd be, love to introduce her to the community. Cool. Um, let's see, I'm looking at the doc. All right, let's get two minutes. Do you have a quick chat about extension policy and stuff? Um, I find myself spending a lot of time waiting for reviews that will actually make it so I can merge things. Uh, yeah, it's sure. Sort of, uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, what what would you propose that we do differently? Yeah, that's where I'm. Where I'm. Uh, I'm stuck. I don't really have a good answer. Um, I mean, I feel like, I feel like there should be some level of code review, right? Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, it is, is the problem that you can't like, is the problem that the people from Pinterest aren't reviewing it like fast enough or is the problem that once they do that, that then like, we don't do the second stage fast enough. Like the, the, the first part happens, but that's like, I just need to like bug them to like jump on stuff and that's, yeah. that's fine. Like I don't, that's no different than, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's like sort of after that, I feel like I end up bugging you all the time for them. Yeah. And, uh, and I think other folks just kind of go like, uh, you know, I don't know anything about thrift, so I don't want to look at it or maybe it's not quite that bad but I, I mean i'm gonna be totally honest like i i mostly just skim it i mean just just right. to look, you know I'm, I'm not like doing like a deep code review mm -hmm. so i don't yeah i don't really know what to do just in the sense that i suppose like github won't won't let you review it without or sorry won't let you submit it without at least someone clicking the button so right. even if it's uh even if it's a rubber stamp um, that's, that's fine. Um, I, I guess one of the things that we could discuss is like a general policy where if one of the maintainers is basically building the extension and they've gotten a code review from someone else who's a domain expert, mm -hmm. then one of the other maintainers can literally just give it like a, like a three minute skim rubber stamp merge. I don't, I don't really have a problem with that, um, but that's probably worth discussing. Yeah, I, I, I would be good with that. I mean, I have little to contribute towards thrift code reviews because I know nothing about thrift, but, uh, um, you know, I, mean, I, I am happy to obviously give uh, code a pass for basic stylistic things and, um, you know, security bugs and that kind of thing. But yeah. I do think like Matt's suggestion sounds more scalable. And um, I mean, again, this is, not going to work in general though because it's you're not going to apply to no code which is not maintained by maintainers right you know and that's something where i think that we're going to have to evolve once that actually happens uh, we're not we're not quite there yet um but yeah I, I i think that there has to be some rubber stamp just in the sense that like one of the nice things about the extension policy is that for organizations like Lyft and like Google and like other people that don't use Thrift, like one of the beautiful things about this is that I, you know, like I know that I'm not going to compile that code. So my, like my caring level, honestly, of like what happens within it is, is less than a change to the core code. So I think from a rubber stamp perspective, um, even just skimming through just to double check that like nothing accidentally leaked you know, like from the extension to the core code and like, should that have been in a separate PR or something like right. that? Um, so like, I, I think that makes sense. So um, I guess maybe what I would suggest is, could you take a look at the verbiage that I wrote in that doc for the existing policy and then maybe just propose some changes to it that would make it easier for you to go into the current maintainers chat and just say, hey, can can someone like right now, today, in the next two hours, just like skim this and and rubber stamp? 
Yeah, okay. make it sort of like the rubber stamping thing sort of like more official. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sure, I could do that. Does does that work? Like, is that? I think that'll help. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Yeah. Yeah, because we're 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 gonna be uh, uh, you know in similar situations soon in the sense that um, the the people from the double RPC thing just opened an opened an issue. I think they're gonna implement that protocol. So we'll have to we'll have to figure out how that works. Also. Yeah. I think it's a little better if, if, so if you have people who are developing an extension and then there's just some maintainer who has signed on to like code review, yes. Sponsor, I, then yeah. like that person's code review can be the code review or the- I agree, the, I agree. Yeah, the, the situation that you're in is a little different. And I, I, I think we're probably actually just looking ahead. I think we're gonna have some other similar situations to what you're doing soon with other extensions. So I, I think making the rubber stamp policy a little more official. I would just be, I, I guess my thinking here is maybe when you when you go through the doc again, and I'm not sure if it's super explicit, I would basically make it really clear, like in bold, that for the rubber stamp policy to apply, all the code has to be within the extensions directory. Like if there's any changes to core, like sure. what we actually should say probably is that any changes to core have to be in a separate PR. Um, and and I, I think that would actually make the whole thing a lot more clear because then we're all on the same page that like this is code that's going to affect everyone. So mm -hmm. let's code review it to that standard. Um, and then for code that basically is only in extensions um, and just kind of like riffing on this and thinking more um, for the mythical bots, which we don't have, like this would be very easy to actually detect. Um, so like, you know, uh, 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 like when you open the PR, a bot could look at the files that are changed and be like, is it an extension only PR and then actually tag it or something like that. So, mm -hmm. right. so those are just some, some random thoughts that come to mind. Okay. I'll take a look at it. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm trying I, I don't have anything else random. Do you Harvey? No. Uh Okay. Um, cool. Do you want to talk about VPP briefly, I guess? Yes. Cool. So yeah, we, we did have a personnel change there, as you, we noted a couple of meetings ago. Um, so I wanted to give Stephen Blair, uh, an op Blair an opportunity to introduce himself. He'll be picking up that work. And you know, my understanding is that the, the plan of record is still to first refactor Envoy's core, to your previous point about high standards of code review. So that extensions of that sort are possible in collaboration with um, both the the quick folks at Google and the um, and the um, Cilium guys, and then introduce a VPP extension based upon those extension points. Yeah, I I so think I think nothing. Your... Yeah, I was gonna say I I think yeah. nothing is changed. Right, I think... Yep. Hmm? All right, what? I think we had some audio hiccup there. I think Stephen may have been trying to introduce himself. Let's oh, sorry. Let's have him go ahead and do that. It's all good. Hey, Stephen. Are you muted, Stephen? Stephen, are you there? Yeah. Have you heard me? I hear you now. Didn't hear that before. Let me turn my volume up. Sorry about that. Okay, I'll start again. Uh, I'm a distinguished engineer at Cisco. I, uh, mic check, Ed, am I doing all right here? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay, okay. Uh, I just came back to Cisco after being gone at a startup for over five years. Um, my background is, uh, has been in OS and infrastructure distributed OS with a, my specialty is pretty much in scalability and uh, non-blocking architectures. Uh, I signed on to this project a little over a week ago. It's completely new to me. <laughs> I actually, this whole space is very new to me. Uh, I'm a cloud native, working in clouds in general, I've done very different stuff uh, for many different years. So I, I'll have a learning curve and a time to ramp up. But I'm going to pick Ed's brain, and he's going to guide me. 
and I will be asking questions and learning as fast as I can. Great, welcome. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, the the plan of record I, I think is still the same, and I think some work has even been done since we last talked, and and that basically boils down to right now in certain parts of the code base we're passing file descriptors around. Um, so in in some sense, the the initial goal is quote simple. It's it's mostly just you know kind of relatively self-contained but wide-reaching refactorings where we're going to hide that file descriptor behind some type of interface. Okay. Yep. So I, 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 your, I your comment was, was pretty apropos, Matt, which is clip out the connect FD method and see what breaks. Yes. And that's, <laughs> and that's exactly what I would do. And, and we can, once you start to make progress, we can, you know, we can figure this out, but um, in, in general, we'll ask for incremental code reviews. So what we'll probably have for a while is we'll have the FD method and this new thing side by side, and we'll just incrementally pick away at, at pieces. But I actually don't think it's, it's, it's that difficult. It's just somewhat, somewhat tedious. But once mm -hmm. that work is done, um, it, it should let us do all this other stuff pretty easily. Okay. Thanks for that guidance. Great. All right, anyone have anything else to chat about? For the, the socket stuff or, or the refactoring, I've kind of been blocking making a lot of forward progress on the UDP stuff, awaiting some of this work. Do you think there is any really dependency between them or should I continue making progress in UDP if I can? I think... Yeah. I th I think UDP is orthogonal, so I think you can probably make progress without this work. Yeah, I, I my suggestion would be the following: we we do have some things that, that potentially later we could do in terms of VPP integration to help with UDP, um, but I wouldn't block on any of that shit. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it's it, that's quite a bit further down the road. Yeah, I think okay. I think basic UDP support is actually not that complicated. So it would be nice to, to, to just kind of see that happen in isolation. Okay, sounds great. Yeah, I was just wondering because we kind of put some stuff like this in the original design doc as far as refactoring oh, okay. out some of the file descriptor right. stuff as like a step one. And that's why. Yeah, I don't think it's it. explicitly required just in the sense that we can have the current code expose a UDP file descriptor um, and, you know, although there'll definitely be some things that need to get worked on, um, I, I, I think it should mostly fall into place. Okay, yeah, that was my thinking too, just to have UDP follow the UDP like file descriptor pattern or something like that. Yep. Great. Anything else? Going once, going twice. All right, have a great couple of weeks, everyone. See ya. All right. Bye. Thank you.